G'day YouTube, Turbo Tristan here, and in today's episode, we're gonna to attempt to do the EK Civic, or EJ, or EM, or EK Sedan, rear disc brake conversion on this 1988 EF Civic three door. Uh, I've got the parts down there, so we're just gonna experiment and see what happens. So as you'll know by the thumbnail and title of this video, we're gonna do an EK upgrade to the brakes here on this EF Civic. What we're gonna to have to do uh, is remove this bolt here, uh, the bolts up here at the top. There's two just here. Disconnect the handbrake and unbolt this one all the way up there. Then this lower control arm, or actually that's a lower control arm, this is a rear trailing arm, so then the rear trailing arm can come out and from there we'll assess what can and can't be done and what needs to be done and we'll see if we can't fit these in the back here and give this car a modern upgrade into the future. Either way, we're going to get it done and we're going to get rear disc brakes on this car somehow uh, with the parts we've got. So we're not going to do anything extra or buy any special kits, we're just going to use what we have we're gonna piece it together. That's a good thing about Hondas, you can kind of Lego or jigsaw it all together and get it to work anyway. In my last video, I took some measurements of everything, eyeballed it, it all looks exactly the same except for the length of this arm here. Now on the EF Civic, this arm is around about 30 millimeters longer from what I can gather. We're gonna pull it out and see what happens. Well, driver side arms out, wasn't too difficult, but there were a few catches. As I mentioned last time, when I did the rear brake disc upgrade on the EK, you do need to disconnect the handbrake and everything before you do that, which I did, but um, getting the cables out was a little bit of a mission. I had to drop the exhaust down, which is gonna come out anyway. It's absolutely crusted and full of soot in there and oil and gross stuff. So we'll get rid of that. Put a new exhaust on it but i had to take this strap out which holds the fuel tank up which required me to use my um little helper over there that stand and then i could get the cable through here which is the handbrake cable but check out up here this is perfectly brand new and shiny still everything about that looks like 1988 exactly it's perfect so i've gone ahead and removed both lines for the handbrake now over to these arms, I've got to say, these are exactly identical in every single way, shape and form. Slight upgrade on the look of how these arms look, but they're the same length, I measured them. And um, the only difference really I can see is this one here is a little bit longer than this one here. So I think it's pretty obvious, you should be able to see that on the camera. It's quite a bit longer. All the rest of the angles and everything are exactly the same. So I'm gonna send it guys. Whoever said that this won't work, we're gonna find out if you're right in just a moment and then you're gonna be able to say, I told you so. And if it works, I'm gonna be able to say, well, I gave it a go and it worked. Not I told you so because I didn't know if it was gonna work or not. So I'm gonna figure it out and let you guys know. I'll be back in just a moment. Just as I suspected, everything bolted up exactly perfectly. These cars are exactly like Lego. So here's another use for an EK sedan or an EK4 or any other disc brake rear end Civic. And I'm sure EGs as well will just bolt straight into another model from an earlier age. Um, the only thing that I modified or changed was I just used the original arm here. And I probably didn't have to, but I did just because that's how it was. Everything, even the factory brake line, um, bolted straight back in. All of these is all perfect. So that's ready to go. Just poke the handbrake cable back through, put in uh, these where they can. I'm sure they will bolt up. If they don't, I can always fold these back, slide them to where they need to be, and then fold them back over, and then put the bolt through. Should be sweet. Not even worried about it. The owner of the car does have some new braided brake lines coming and some new rotors and pads. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure I've even got the pads here. So that's all good. Just waiting on the rotors and the braided brake lines and we'll upgrade that. So that's one job done. I'm gonna do the other side, finish that off. And then it's up to draining all the fluids out of the car, oil, coolant, petrol, whatever's left in there and just start disconnecting everything like the drive shafts, like the gear shifters, all that sort of stuff. We'll get it ready to start pulling all those pieces off and then it's ready to take the engine out, hopefully. So in the next day or two, engine should be out. It's the next day. We've got both sides buttoned up. The handbrake cable and everything is in. Uh, this bracket here actually on the EK was flipped around the other way and it sort of bolted uh, up onto here, whereas this time I just flipped it around and bolted it down, matched up with the locating points. Same goes for here, same goes for there. I managed to push the handbrake cable back through the factory rubber here and use the original uh, mounting plate there. So that's all awesome. So they're all good. But we've had some goodies turn up and they are just down here. I'll show you what they are. We've got some VMAX brake rotors, both sides. We've got some uh, generic brake pads. And we've got the safe brake upgraded braided brake lines. Now I love these, these are made um, in Melbourne and distributed from here, from a company down here. So supporting these guys, I've used them. This will be my fourth or fifth time using this brand now, so I can trust them. And I recommend you guys look out for that brand. Um, they do sell them on eBay. Just look up Safe Break. Get yourself a set. Nicely priced, nice and cheap, plenty of warranty, really good quality. So I'm going to chuck all that stuff on. I was contemplating painting the brakes. Um, I don't have any red paint, which would match the car, look good behind the wheels. I've got some black paint, but then again, that's not part of what I was supposed to do for the car and if I was going to do all that I'd spend a lot of time smoothing and cleaning up all the calipers getting all those um, marks and bumps off them and really we just want to get this one done we'll take absolute professional care with the car being it's such a beautiful condition rare car but um, yeah I won't go overboard unless of course the owner wants me to and then that'll be an extra cost of pulling them off painting them prepping them all that sort of stuff and then refitting them but i'll get this on get this done we've still got to work out this setup anyway and what that's all going to cost so we'll talk to the owner and talk about getting that done but i'm going to put all this together now because i hate seeing filthy dirty rusty parts on the car so we're going to get that sorted I'll come back to you once it's done. And just like that, the rear brakes are fully upgraded to EK discs, rotors, pads, braided brake lines. We've got lower control arms done. We've got the coilovers in. That's a wrap on this end. Now it's up to the fun stuff in the front and ripping the whole front of the car apart. But let me show you this first. New brake rotors, new brake pads. I gave the calipers a scuff with the wire brush just to get it cleaned up a little bit. We've got the safe brake braided lines on all the way up there. Both sides, of course, all done. Uh, brake lines here, all good. All cleaned up, ready to go. Now the fun starts, ripping the guts out of the front end. Don't know if I should start doing the fuel tank down here yet, but I've, all that sort of stuff can come later. The main job which I've been putting off is dismantling the whole front end. So I'll probably set up a time lapse and get stuck into ripping that apart.
halfway through that time lapse, the camera went dead, so you didn't actually get to see me pull the engine out, but here it is right here on the ground. I've given that a pressure wash. Uh, it was covered in grease and grime all the way around. Now it looks pretty well new again. There's parts all over the garage, but as you can see, the garage floor is looking pretty darn clean up until around two minutes ago this place was filthy with grease grime sludge oil gear oil everything i just made a big mess everywhere so i just wanted to give a shout out to my missus uh she's the real mvp she's always out here in the shed behind the scenes she doesn't want to be on camera but when the cameras are down she's out here working on the cars with me she helped me do the coil over install on the silver one the red one uh, she helps clean she brings me coffees so i just wanted to say a massive shout out to my missus definitely wifey material um, so couldn't be happier with that i'm a lucky guy what can i say and uh, she probably won't watch this because she only usually just watches the first 10 seconds and clicks like and gives me a view so she's not even going to see this but if she does you're the MVP. As you can see in the background, the engine is out of the car. It's been pressure washed in the whole engine bay. Uh, it's been degreased. We've cleaned everything up out of there. There's over 30, I think 34 years is how old this is. 88 model, quick maths. But it looks really, really good for its age. Uh, a little bit pinkish inside, which is weird because it doesn't really see the sun. It should be much brighter than the outside, but I guess that's heat and stuff. Um, but it's all been pressure washed. Everything's come up looking like brand new. I couldn't be happier with that. The whole base of the car is now ready for me to start planning what to do next. I've got to somehow figure out how to mount a hydraulic clutch slave cylinder there on the firewall. Uh, run the cable for that. It's got to match up to the clutch pedal. So I need to find out where that is. Drill the hole there make a plate mount that so it's nice and solid i might even have to go to the wreckers and get some different pedals uh, and throttle cables for a d series out of an ek or an eg at the wreckers which i still might do because that might help just get all the lengths and everything right so i might go and do that we're really modernizing this car and just bringing everything as much as we can into the early 2000s late 90s instead of the late 80s so i'm gonna have to chase down some engine mounts figure all that out i've got a traction bar coming uh, that's going to be supplied by max peating rod so that's really awesome radiators out the exhaust needs replacing it's full of oil and stuff but yeah this engine's really tidy i'm not sure what the owner's going to do with it if it's going to be for sale or if he wants to keep it and maybe one day think about putting it back to standard who knows but I've definitely got my work cut out for me. Heaps and heaps of work to do, planning. As I've mentioned before, I've never done anything like this, so I'm just winging it, going hard or going home. I'm gonna get that inside, back up on the hoist, pack up the cars and call it a night, go spend some time with my missus because she definitely deserves it. Um, like I said, couldn't be happier. Wifey material, thanks so much. In the meantime, make sure you like, share and subscribe, spool up, bring the boost, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.